So now in chapter 3, they're going to ask us to find the mean. Here, I'll show you. Compute the mean, compute the variance, compute the standard deviation, all that stuff. Well, we learned how to do that, believe it or not, in chapter 3. Um, there were some tutorials for it. I believe it was tutorials 5, 6, and 7, so for chapter 3. But let's see how to do it. So it's, it's asking about the Red Sox data, which is the same data we already had. Oopsie, I'm going to make that bigger again. All right, I'm going to go stat, calc, one variable. Don't do two variables. It's, it's not useful. It's not really what we want. And you want to tell it second one comma, right? So L1, that's where you're telling it to go get the, um, I guess I do need to see this, that's where the number of home runs is, right? That's the actual data, that's X. Now, for your second column, remember we have the number of games in L2 and we have the probabilities in L3. It's not going to make a whole hell of a lot of difference, so, so do whichever one you want, but I want to show you something, so I'm going to do L3, the probabilities, okay? Now remember, these probabilities have got to add up to 1. Right, keep that in mind. So I'm going to press enter and there we go. There's the mean. So on average at a, at a Red Sox game that year it was 1.395 so let me scroll down here. So the mean was 1.395 which means all right, on average the Red Sox had 1.39 home runs per game in 2004. Okay. Now the standard deviation, standard deviation, that is 1.135. Now the deal is because we use the probabilities, remember the probabilities add up to 1, right? But the formula for standard deviation for a sample has the denominator of the fraction being n minus 1. Just go back and look at the 3.2 notes if you don't believe me. But n the, the total for this column makes 1. So if these add up to 1, 1 take away 1 is 0, and you can't divide by 0. That's why the SX is blank. Okay. So for these particular problems in Chapter 6, you're better off sticking with the sigma, which also would have existed if you would have put these in. Let me just show you that real quick. Stat, edit. Oh, I'm sorry, I already have that. Quit. If I do what I just did, but I do L2, second, two, which is the number of games, now it gives me an S because now it's got this total, okay? But for this chapter, just ignore that and go with the sigma because S isn't going to exist half the time, so, so stick with sigma, okay? Because you're talking about a probability distribution anyway, so it's, it's automatically thought of be, as being a population, okay? So as far as we're concerned, the standard deviation is 1.135. I know that's not really uh, population, but it is because as far as we're concerned, this Red Sox team of 2004 is all we're concerned in order, right, to, in order to make the probabilities. What's the variance? The variance would be the standard deviation squared, which is, let's think, 1.135 to the 2 power. Okay, so you could find that a couple ways. You could just type 1.135, square it, or remember the trick from chapter 3, there's number 5, because that's statistics, and there's sigma right there, number 4, see it? So press number 4, then press the squared button over here, x squared, and press enter. And there's your variance. It's 1.288. Now what does the standard deviation tell us? Well, it tells us that, for lack of a better term, it's the give or take, right? The slop factor, the error. So we're saying, look, the Red Sox should have about 1.39 home runs per game, right? had, I should put the word about, because this is all approximation, give or take 1.135 home runs. Oopsie. That's what the standard deviation represents. It's the give or take. The, okay, I think it should be around 1.39, and the standard deviation gives us a way of measuring what that around part is. Oakley doakley, I think we are done with 6.1. Um, I think we are all set, and I will see you here later for the next tutorial.